Hello and welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, let's take a look at the Sidewinder X2. But first of all, roll those credits. Okay, welcome back. So before we get started, please don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. Uh, we have had a huge boom in the amount of subscribers that we've had recently. It's really helping the channel grow and it's helping us to work with great manufacturers like Artillery to bring you some of the better machines that are out there. So, the X2. The X2 is a spiritual successor to the X1. Um, this isn't just another version number, okay? So uh, the version, so the X1 had four versions. They were minor iterations, they made small tweaks, but nothing fundamental. This is a new machine. It just may, it's just encased in the same format and using a lot of the same features that the original um, X1 had. So um, as we, we'll go through the fundamentals of the machine to begin with. So we're 300 by 300 by 400 on the build volume. We have a direct drive extruder powered by a Titan linked to a Volcano hot end. We now have auto bed leveling and we have an AC heated bed. So a silicone heat pad on the bottom and carborundum glass for a build plate. Fundamentally, that is the machine. Um, it's worth noting that you can use a full-size USB-A type um, drive as well as an SD card in this, and it's got a nice little touch screen as well. So there were a few issues with the X1 V4. Let me be clear, on the channel we actually have three X1s. We genuinely love them. They've been workhorses, they do really high quality prints, um, they've been pretty reliable. Um, and I, you know, I've, I've certainly really enjoyed using mine. There are some issues. So let's run through them. So the first and foremost is the bed cable. So on the X1, the bed cable is in the rear right hand corner. And after a few hundred hours of printing, um, it had no bed strain relief. And normally the thermistor would die in the bed. And you had two options at that point. You could either run your own thermistor which is messy, or you could, um, you could buy a brand new bed. Now the problem with this is that the glass has the screws integral to it to, um, the, the silicone is just stuck to the bottom of the glass. There's no aluminium plate. So, um, so that meant replacing the whole bed and that was an arse. Um, next was the, uh, was the extruder. So the idler arm is made of plastic and generally speaking, either in shipping or through regular use, you eventually cracked and broke that idler arm. Um, there were some issues with the uh, with the flat ribbon cables, where they just used to they used to work the way loose. They sometimes sometimes caused arcs and could screw up your extruder or screw up your overall um, your overall printing. Not ideal. Next, probably most frustrating for us is that we do change our firmware. Right, so this comes with a relatively stock version of Marlin on it. Previously, it was an NKS Gen L board, and the problem with that is that the TFT and the USB Type B, I think it is, the printer USB, but you plug into the main board, they both use the same COM line on the board. So if you want to connect this machine, if you want to connect an X1 to your PC, you actually have to open up the back plate and you have to unplug the TFT from the main board. It's really annoying. Now, technically speaking, you could debate you shouldn't really have to flash the firmware, but that's not the world we live in. Then, Sidewinder, or Artillery, sorry, have, um, have fixed or changed a few other things. So, um, let's take a look around the machine so that you guys can get a real, a real, sort of, a real feel of, of, of how the machine works and, and the new things, and I'll point, that, and I'll point those out.
Okay, so as you can see, they have fixed everything bar one issue. So they have left the plastic idler arm on there. Now I want to be clear that this is a relatively minor change that you have to make. Um, it's pretty easy to dismantle the tool head. It's very, very cheap to change it over. It's a little disappointing that we didn't see that all metal idler, idler arm, but it is what it is, okay? So just to quickly run down the improvements that they've made, because there are quite a few. So they've wildly improved the bed um, in so much as now it's got this bed strain relief and there's a channel cut at the back. Um, it, now has, uh, it now has braces and clips on every single bit of flat cable. This cable here now actually docks as part of the assembly procedure rather than you having to plug it in. And we now have the BL touch sensor as well. We've also switched over to a 32-bit mainboard that now no longer requires you to, um, to unplug the TFT to flash the firmware. And my God, has it made a difference? I would honestly say yes, but probably not in the ways that most people want. So this machine now is at a place where it genuinely will be most people's workhorses. This will be a machine that is much easier to maintain. There's less things that go wrong. Has it overall drastically improved the quality of the prints? My answer to that is honestly, no. My Sidewinder X1 does fantastic prints. It's taken a little bit of tuning, it's taken a little bit of tweaking. I have done zero mods to my X1s. I think on one of my X1s, I flashed the Wagster mod to, um, to my screen just to get better screen firmware. But other than that, I have done zero changes to those and they churn out brilliant prints. But I have been through a couple of beds the bed levelling is a little annoying sometimes. The fact I can't flash firmware really irritates me. And, um, and I mean, I've never had any issues with my cables, but I know a lot of people that have. This is a refined machine at this point. This is um, a bit like when the CR-10S became the CR-10S Pro. They are, they, to me, these machines are that different. They've made a significant investment in time and effort to get this machine to a really good place. There are some people who are saying there's a lot more plastic on the machine than there was before. I don't necessarily disagree, but let's just be clear about where they've added plastic. They've put two covers on the left and right hand side. They serve no function other than really dust covers and decorative. So. You could take those off if you wanted to. There's just, there's just the sister boards behind there and there's nothing on the other end. This bit of plastic is now blue instead of black. Who really cares? Nobody. And then obviously they have changed the X beam up top for this injection molded plastic. And I understand why they've done that. It makes it a little bit easier to, um, it makes it a little bit easier to fit the spool holder to. But I'm going to be honest with you and say that there's no functional difference with putting that up there at all. Um, there's no other there's no other extra plastic that goes on here. They've not they've not reduced the quality. They've just reduced a touch of weight. That's it. Um, the the uh, the automatic bed leveling is effectively a BL touch. They're not allowed to call it a BL touch, but it's a BL touch. Um, and other than that, I mean, I've got to be honest with you, the machine is still great. So let's take a look at some of the prints and then we'll do a final summary. Right, okay, so let's start with the obligatory calibration cube. This was the calibration cube we did on the live stream. And um, you can see there's a couple of little issues there. There's a little bit of under extrusion that's causing some issues. Um, overall, it's not a bad cube, certainly not bad for out of the box, but we tuned the printer and we pretty much solved a lot of these issues. So we come on to the benchy. So this benchy is really nice and clean. You can see that that first layer maybe has a bit too much squish on it. You can do live Z adjust on this machine. I just didn't do it on this. It's a little bit too much squish on there. But other than that, that's a pretty solid looking benchy. Nice top layers, no real stringing, very good. We come on to the 3D all-in-one print test. So dimensional accuracy on these parts, very, very good. Stringing, we need a little bit of work on retraction. So there's a little bit of blobbing on some of those, but not too bad. 
and the overhangs on this are all the way up to 65 I would say on the short and 78 is good on the long so it's only when we really get to 80 on there and 75 on there that we start to see some some uh, some underlayer stuff but to be honest with you even those are, are passable the bridging tests are brilliant on that so very very nice and clean nice surface finish very very good this was done in vase mode a nice little vase here um again very very clean a little bit too close on that first layer but again that's that's easy enough to do nice consistent extrusion no real, uh, no real signs of, of anything that needs to be adjusted on the tool head there. I really love these. These are print in place iris cubes and they are fantastic tolerance tests. Um, so it prints all in one like this and then you break the tabs at the bottom and then you're able to do this. Really, really nicely done. Came out really cool. Because this prints like this, it means when it's closed, it's got this sort of opposing layer lines love this really cool model and then we have our honey badger so a little bit more of a complex one this one had tree supports on it and my god it did a beautiful job on this really really nice this is all using e-sun filament um, that's the same stuff we were using on the live stream we didn't change filaments because we really wanted to show that if you tweak your profile a bit you can get really nice glossy results there so absolutely gorgeous prints there uh, very very happy with those so let's move on to final conclusion okay so what can i say about the x2 that hasn't already been said and the answer is not a lot it is a great machine i would put this at a solid nine out of ten i'm a little disappointed that we didn't see um a, a all metal idler arm it is an all metal tool head now. So if you put this in an enclosure, you would definitely be able to print ABS on it. Certainly PEP G without an enclosure. Um, the machine ticks so many boxes. The only reason that I'm not giving it a 10 is because before we reviewed this, we reviewed the Voron 2.4. And I mean, you probably have already seen my review of the 2.4. I love that machine that is everything we have been asking for as a community for the last decade i i mean and this is a great machine it's fantastic for new people it's fantastic for advanced people if you want a workhorse if you want something that can do detail work absolutely get this machine it is at the price that it should be at which when i last checked was 479 dollars on um on the artillery website uh, we'll put the link in the video description this machine is damn near perfect um there are a lot of people who don't like flat ribbon cables that's fine these work again i haven't had issues with my x1 and these have all now been reinforced um, there's a lot of people who don't like the plastic x beam it makes no material difference to the quality of your prints i don't see anything offensive about it um, I, I honestly, I honestly can't fault the machine. And the only reason it's getting a nine is because we printed all of these at around 75 millimeters a second. And that is really getting towards the limitation of what you can achieve on a regular Cartesian machine. It's not a Delta. It's on a core XY. It doesn't have a bunch of extra frame bracing. 75 millimeters a second is acceptable to produce good quality prints. Um, but I do want a little bit more. I've tasted what the other side can be like with the Voron 2.4. And that's my benchmark to beat for right now. Um, I, don't, I don't think I've, I mean, I've used raised 3Ds, I've used Ultimakers, I've used E3D tool changers, and I just don't think I've found anything better than a 2.4, than a Voron. But this, Oh, this is close. When it comes to Cartesians, this is my pick of the litter. This is a machine that I genuinely love. Now, I want to be clear. Artillery sent us this machine. That comes up in the beginning of the uh, video anyway. We have to declare that. They did not pay us for this review, 
nor do they pay us for any of our reviews, and we never guarantee anybody a good review. I am giving this a you should buy this seal of approval because I genuinely believe you should buy it. I, I love the artillery range anyway. We have a Hornet, we have X1s, we have a Genius. Now we have the X2, and the likelihood is we're going to get a Genius Pro as well. Um, I really love the machines. I really love what they're doing. And my God, I don't think you can buy a better Cartesian on the market right now. Auto bed levelling, direct drive, um, pretty good park cooling, dual Z access, AC heated bed. What more can you really ask for? Except for maybe just those speeds that you can get out of a Voron, which you can't do with a machine like this. So, thanks very much for joining, guys and dolls. That is our overall opinions. The Sidewinder X2, go buy it. It's a great machine. Um, keep an eye on the channel. Do not forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you all soon. Thank you very much for joining.